What's going on everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel and for the regulars here, you will know that I'm a Rangers fan and if you're new and if you've already not clocked on by the accent, I am Scottish but that won't affect my bias throughout this video because when it comes to international football, I love watching it, I love these tournaments but I don't particularly actually support any nation. So what our plan is for this video is to go through the UEFA prediction website, going through, seeing who I think will get the group, seeing who will get into the later stages and actually win the tournament and from my viewers the most people tend to be from scotland and england so we're going to take a bit of an in-depth look at those teams and get a bit of discussion down in the comments below as what we think their best starting 11 is and again for the regular viewers you will know that we usually do watch alongs on the channel for the rangers game but we're actually going to be doing a couple of watch alongs for the euro games just to get some discussion and keep chatting to you guys our regular supporters of the channel so let me know down in the comments what games you would like to see us do a watch along on i'm presuming just all scotland and england games so getting right into it then i'm going to start off with the bottom team in this group and i just think that is going to be wales i think bale will come in he'll do his thing again but at his age now how regular he's been playing has he got enough just to carry wales through this pretty tough group i don't think so so wales coming in at fourth and now this is extremely tough right because italy are top for me they're going to top that group they have an amazing squad that middle three of Barella, Verratti, Jorginho and Mobley up top it's a frightening squad who actually could be dark horses in this tournament but I'm really struggling between Switzerland and Turkey for who to put second in this Turkey I believe before this are, have only lost one of the last 12 games obviously got Yilmaz up front who's just had an incredible season winning the league in in France and then Switzerland as well with Shakiri who always turns up in these tournaments. Akanji, Sommer at the back, defensively solid. Ugh, I'm going to go Switzerland in second and Turkey in third for this one. On to Group B, the easy thing to start this off is put Belgium top of this group. But like Belgium, they are going to come out of that group. It is tough though from here on out. <sighs> to put these in an order, I can't see Russia having a performance like they did in that 2018 World Cup where Golvin was absolutely on fire for them then. I think they're actually going to come fourth in this. For me, third place will be Finland. I know, I'm trying not to be biased because I've got Glenn Kamara, one of the best midfielders in Europe in there, but I really feel like this is a stage where Glenn Kamara will start to get the plaudits that he deserves. He gets it off of Rangers fans and teams that have played Rangers already, but I think the rest of Europe will actually get to see Kamara's talents, but I just don't think their squad is good enough to, well, get the guaranteed place through in this group, and I think Denmark will get the second spot with Eriksen, with Hoiberg, you've got Delaney in there as well, they've got the AC Milan centre-back, who I'm not going to pronounce because I will get absolutely slaughtered for the pronunciation, but tough one, but I'm going with that for Group B. On to Group C then, and top of this group I think will be the Netherlands, of course they're not going to have Van Dijk, that might affect them in the later stages of the competition, but this group, they should still get through. The back two, I presume, will be De Vries and De Ligt, and that's still not bad having them two at the back, still absolute rocks. Depay who's on form, Weghorst who's just had a brilliant season, De Jong with Wijnaldum in the middle will be too strong for this group, but definitely having them coming first. Second for me will be Austria, Alaba and Sibitsa holding that down in the middle. Third place, Ukraine and fourth for Macedonia. Group D then, and now this is where things start to get interesting. A lot of talking points in this one. And I'm going to start it off now by going over what I think Scotland's starting 11 should be. Now what I think and what Steve Clark will actually put out there will probably have a few changes. But in my opinion, let me know yours down in the comments below. This here should be Scotland's starting lineup. McLaughlin is by far the best Scottish keeper when Alan McGregor isn't involved, but I think we all know David Marshall is going to get the favouritism there and start and go. The back three, I think, will be Tierney on the left hand side. Hanley should be in the middle and Cooper on the right. The two wing backs of Robertson and Nathan Patterson. Nathan Patterson on that right has to play over O'Donnell, he just offers so, so much more. We can't have any of this experience and age nonsense. He has to play because he's Scotland's best right wing back. The middle three, McTominay, who definitely will get in there. McGinn, who definitely will get in there. But the third place, Ryan Jack could have been in for a shout if he didn't unfortunately pick up his injuries that he's got. But Steve Clark's been favouring Callum McGregor from Celtic, who has had an awful 
season, whereas you've got Billy Gilmore, who's just went out and won the Champions League and had a good season when he's come on for Chelsea. It's an absolute no-brainer that McGinn, McTominay and Gilmore have to be that middle three for Scotland. Up top, you've got a few different things you can do. I think Adams is assuming he's definitely going to start up there, but I'd personally still play him next to Dykes just to be annoying for defenders, and I think Shea Adams can play really well off of Dykes, but he's also got Nisbet and Christie, who no doubt will make some appearances throughout the tournament, if not late off the bench. Again, let me know your thoughts in that team down in the comments below, but we're going to move on to the England team where there's a lot more options, a lot more variety. Well, maybe not in this centre-back position because that is somewhere that they could do with someone the likes of I don't know, Connor Goldson to be walking right in there and partner on John Stones, but this is what I think the team should be for England. If Pope was fit for the Euros, I think he should have started, but I think it would be Pickford. Walker getting that right back spot next to Stones and Cody. I do not rate Harry Maguire at all, but I think he, I think he will play Maguire, but I don't think he should. Left back, definitely sure he's a brilliant season. Rice is that holding midfielder spot. Henderson, of course, Still a great player, great leadership to be around the squad, but I think just with the fitness, him coming back off an injury, Rice just had a great season as well, deserves that spot. Bellingham, outstanding player, especially for his age. He does the work forward and back as well in that midfield. Him next to Mount, I think would be absolutely lethal, sitting in front of Declan Rice, because they would come back and help as well. Kane, he's definitely got that striker spot. The right, I think, Foden is still a level above Sancho. Should be Foden for me. And on the left, you've got Sterling, you've got Rashford. But for me, Jack Grealish just offers so much to that England team. But some of the options that England have to come off the bench is absolutely frightening. But for me, this would be their team. Let me know your thoughts about it down in the comments below. So getting back to the group then, I'm going to start in fourth place with this one. And I actually think it will be Czech Republic with a couple of racist sympathisers in there. They've got Suchek, they've got Kufal, a couple of the West Ham boys. But... Overall, don't think the squad is good enough. Scotland have beaten three times in the past two years already, as I believe. I think they will come fourth in this group. Now, interesting for the rest. England are going to top this group. I think they would be very disappointed if England fans if they didn't get top in this group. But it's interesting with how that works out for Group F, because if they come top, they would face second in this group where... Realistic, that's going to be one of Portugal, France or Germany, so it actually benefits them to come second, but anyway, if they want to be the best, they've got to beat the best. Second place in this, again, I'm not biased towards Scotland, but being one of the home nations for this, I honestly believe they're going to pip Croatia. Croatia, they were in that last World Cup final, done well, but since they've not been having as consistent of results, still a fantastic team, Modric, Rakitic, Brozovic, holding down that midfield, Kovacic is in there as well, all the itches, but I've just got that feeling Scotland will surprise some people in this tournament and come second in this group, so of course I'm meaning Croatia third. So group E, I'm going to start this off by putting Sergio ramos list Spain, and it's been a while since you've heard that, be it injuries, be it consistency, Ramos for the first time has been left out of this Spain squad, which we'll see how that affects the mentality and also playing ability of the squad. They've got Laporte who you think will come in and just directly replace Ramos for this. Him and Piqué at the back, also Alba and Carvajal, each wing back. The middle three, we've got Busquets, we've got Parejo, you've got youngsters like Pedri and Fatio coming through. Up top, Moreno, who's a great season for Villarreal. They're not the Spain of old, but they still do have a fantastic team. I'm going to put them to come first in this group. But the rest of this is difficult. This is a difficult group. I think Svaki are going to come fourth. Sorry, Hamchuk. Usually always love watching him play. <sighs> now, this is tough. I'm actually going to put Sweden second and Lewan and his squad coming third in this group. Let me know your thoughts on that. Into the group of death then and yeah, let's just get hungry fourth and move on from there. Galashi is going to have a very busy time in this group, the Hungarian goalkeeper, let's just say that. Uh, hey, if they come out here, watch them shock the world and end up getting through this group somehow, but uh, I really don't see it. Third place for me, a recovering squad, again, like Spain, they're not the Germany of old, but they've still got a fantastic team. It's a defence, it's a little bit worrying, but midfield to front with Kroos, Gundogan, Kimmich, 
Muller, Nabri, Sane, still absolutely frightening players in that squad, but the other two squads in here just think are better right now. And here, Portugal and France, two of the favourites. Hmm. France, you know, they've got a player. Their second team could with them for a good shout away in this full Euros, literally their full reserve team, they have that good of a squad, they've got three players for every position, Benzema coming in as well I think will be absolutely massive for France and Aston, but, but, even with that, I think Portugal are going to go top them in this group, the amount of talent that Portugal have coming through, Ruben Diaz and Pepe, Cancelo, Guerrero at left back, a middle of Danilo Perea, you've got Sergio Oliveira, Renato Sanchez, Bruno, up top Ronaldo, Jota, Felix coming through, Bernardo Silva, it's, <sighs> might they be my favourites to win all this? But we're not quite done yet with the group stage because we have four of the best third placed teams going through, so this is really what teams do I think will get zero points. I think Macedonia will get zero points, I think Ukraine will go through in third, I think Czech Republic will get zero points, Croatia will go through on third, I think Hungary will get zero points, Germany through on third, so now, hmm, I think Finland, Russia, I think anything could beat each other, to be honest, I think Wales c can get a draw off of Turkey, I think Poland's like them two could both beat each other as well, I'm going to say, I'm going to pick Turkey to get through for this. So this here would be the round of 16 if the groups finish the way that I predicted. So we'll just go top to bottom from this. Belgium and Germany, that is a very, very tasty round of 16 matchup. Attack versus attack, I think there would be a lot of goals in this game. Kevin De Bruyne fighting fitness to come back into this as well from the smashed up face that he got in that Champions League final. I think Belgium, Lukaku, the Hazard brothers, who have both been playing, well, the younger Hazard's actually been playing better than Eden Hazard of recent, but I th think I'm going to put through, ah, oh, this, this is a coin flip, but I'm going for Belgium. Italy are going to get past Austria. Portugal are going to get past Turkey. Scotland and Sweden, I think that would be a very favourable matchup for Scotland. I think they actually could get past Sweden. I do believe it. It's, don't know about that next round though. Spain to beat Ukraine. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is what we're talking about for if England come first in their group. England can beat them. They could. Oh, but do I? I? I honestly do not know. There'll be a lot of people, if you're not an England fan, I think everyone right now will be going, pick France, pick France, pick France, but I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can, and I'm... I don't know. I think England could beat them, but it would be rude. It would just be rude not to put France through. Netherlands, Croatia, another very tough game, but I think Netherlands would just have too much for Croatia. Switzerland, Denmark, very tight game that one. That's another one of those coin flips. <laughs> Literally, I'll flip a coin here and I'll just say Switzerland. Oh, I've got no idea what way that one will go. Oh. See, this is the thing with these Euros. It's like World Cup, you have a lot of games where you're like, uh, obvious winner, obvious winner, obvious winner. The Euros gets into such crazy games very quickly I think Italy will have, have enough to beat them I think the defence will be a lot better hitting them in the counter attack a couple of times Insigne and Mobley the lethal finisher I just don't think Belgium's defence will be able to hold off that Italy team I'm going to go with Italy getting through there but, sorry Scotland see you later Spain and France I think England will be a much, much tougher task than um, Spain for France, I think France will go through that, I think Netherlands will get past Switzerland, up to the top, I think Portugal will have too much for Italy, France will have too much for Portugal, and then the two from the group of death will meet in the final, where I think, will it be 
the World Cup defenders or will it be the Euro defenders? And I honestly believe that Portugal squad has enough to do it all and my winner of this Euro 2020 slash 2021 will be Portugal. So just to finish off, I'm just going to go over a couple of these points which gives us a couple more discussion points down in the comments below. So obviously, you know, my winner will be Portugal. And next up here, we have the Dark Horses. And I honestly think it could be Italy coming up from that top side of the bracket. My surprise team for the tournament, again, with no bias because I'm not particularly supporting Scotland in this. I'm just kind of watching the Euros as a neutral and just enjoying all the games. I actually think the surprise team will be Scotland getting into that knockout stage of the tournament. My pick for best player is usually someone from the team who actually wins it overall. So because I think it's going to be Portugal, I think the Premier League player of the year, Ruben Diaz, is going to carry that form over to the Portugal national team and help them win the Euros. I think he will get the best player. But if France win on the other side, I think N'Golo Kante will end up picking that up. And the top goal scorer for us, I'm sure a lot of people will be thinking Benzema, you'll be thinking Mbappe, you'll be thinking Ronaldo, Kane. But I think their groups are a lot more difficult than the top goal scorer that I'm going to be picking. And I think Romelu Lukaku will be top goal scorer and he will run riot in that group stage. So these here are my final Euro 2020 predictions. And don't forget to put your thoughts down in the comments below. Just leave down here who you think will be the winner, the dark horse, the surprise team, the best player and the top goal scorer for the tournament. And also put down there what games you'd like to see us do or watch along for on the channel. But as always guys, thank you for the continued support. We'll hopefully be back with more of you soon and we'll see you in the next one.